So what happens next? Let's bring in our panel, former CIA officer Buck Sexton, security expert and Shulman Fellow with the Clarion Project, Ryan Morrow, and former CIA station chief who served in Moscow, Iraq, and Pakistan, Daniel Hoffman. Gentlemen, uh, good, good morning. Uh, Daniel, let me start with you uh, down there in Washington. What is next? I mean, what are the options here? Well, uh, there are probably three options that are out there. The first is another military strike or series of military strikes against serious chemical weapons facilities and storage facilities. But there are also a couple of other options. One is to try to create safe zones to protect the population. And then third, we could get some skin in the game and restart the support that we used to provide to the Syrian Democratic Forces. When I was chief of the Middle East uh, operations at CIA mm -hmm. a few years back, uh, and we were considering all the, the threats resulting from this petri dish that is Syria now. Uh, we all believed at the time that to get to dealing with those threats, you needed to remove Assad. Uh, in order to do that, you've really got to help some, some of the opposition on the ground. And that's not what we're doing right now. Buck, uh, you have some familiarity with this. Walk us through how this decision will be made, because clearly there will have to be a larger uh, plan. Well, the consequences of this initial strike also have to be seen. We don't really know exactly how particularly Russia and, and Iran will respond to this. And I think that one of the big tensions right now uh, that President Trump is dealing with is the fact that his base does not want, and I think quite honestly the American people don't want a deeper involvement in Syria. It's one thing to enforce a red line. I think um, messaging by missiles has its uses, uh, but we shouldn't start to think that this is going to be easier for us going forward if we get more deeply involved. And many of the uh, different parameters that are out there right now, many different options that we could, could utilize, I think that honestly it's too late in the game for them to be effective. And we don't want to take out the Assad regime because we don't know what would follow it. And that really puts a major, uh, a major problem in the midst of all of our strategic concerns. Ryan, what do you say to the fact that, you know, we're sending a message now after this second strike over there that you're not going to like what comes next if you don't stop. Is that going to be enough? Well, Assad's calculation is going to be, did this work out for me? Overall, if I got a few sites that were bombed, did my territory increase? Am I stronger? And if the answer to that is yes, then he will continue to use chemical weapons. But I think in the near future, what you're going to see is Assad testing us by using non-chemical weapons to commit massacres to see where our red line is on that. It's very possible you're going to see terror plots by Iran and Hezbollah, particularly against our Arab allies. And you are going to see a bombardment of Russian and Assad disinformation uh, coming towards the American audience. That's very conspiracy theory in nature, made to look at, make it seem like Putin is some type of hero and Assad is innocent. That's a good point. Daniel, let me ask you, you know, how important is it to counter uh, Russia's narrative, Putin's narrative here? And are we on uh, somewhat of a collision course with Russia? Well, you know, our relationship with Russia is, is in a pretty serious rough patch right now following their election meddling and their attack with a nerve agent on the defector, Sergei Skripal. Uh, Putin is messaging his own people. He was very concerned about, about the results of Arab Spring and, and the threat that that posed for potential populist uprising in Russia. I've listened to the Russian news media today, and they're characterizing this attack uh, by the United States, France, and the UK on Syria. It's just a violation of Syria's territorial integrity. That's where Vladimir Putin and the Russians are coming out on this. It is of vital importance for us to continue um, this battle of ideas. The president, I thought, spoke eloquently last night. Ambassador Nikki Haley has likewise delivered a strong message. But I'd like to see something as well from our allies in the region, starting with Turkey. Buck, let me ask you, just broadening this outside of the Assad axis, if you will, North Korea, what message does this send to North Korea, the president obviously looking next month to sit down with Kim Jong-un? One of the considerations for this strike was the message that it would send to regimes like North Korea and, and to Russia, specifically for the usage of chemical weapons, even in the very limited context we've seen of, of assassinations. So this does reinforce that bright red line well outside the boundaries of Syria. It also shows the administration is willing to follow through on threats. Much of our foreign policy and national security based diplomacy is all about the credible threat of force. And we heard a lot about that during the eight years of the Obama administration. But I think a lot of our enemies figured that they could keep pushing and pushing. Assad, by the way, is a perfect example of that. Did not believe that the threat of force was credible, and rightly so. I think you look at what North Korea has to take away from this, what the Russians, any Russian proxies, uh, Iran, its proxies, 
Iraqis, Hezbollah, and all the rest, they have to see this and recognize that if they cross certain lines, this president is going to take action and there will be consequences. Ryan, I'll give you the last word. How much of this uh, is an inherited problem from the last administration? Oh, so much of it, but even going before the Obama administration, under the Bush administration, there were many Syrian dissidents, some of whom I kind of worked with and did research for, that were saying, look, in the future there's going to be a civil war in Syria, and if you don't start backing the good guys and building up an alternative to Assad, the only alternative you will have will be Islamist terrorists, and that's exactly what has happened. Ryan Buck, Daniel Hoffman, thank you very much, guys. A lot more coming up on this topic. It's certainly a big story. Many of you just waking up. We'll have more. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being here.